Okay, a big hello to everybody watching. It's me, Shotty4HF, and in this video, I'll be looking at a free plugin called the A1 Trigger Gate by Alex Hilton. I'll be using Cubase. Let's take a look. Okay, so really quickly before I start, it can be an expensive game making music, and since I started, which was around the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, from guitars, microphones, equipment, um, I use an RME Fireface, and that wasn't cheap. And then there's the computer, the monitor speakers, and then the software on top of that. Um, native instruments complete, there's plugins from Waves and other companies. It really is a small fortune already. And there are still many other things that I would like to have in this studio. Um, so when a free plugin comes along to give you, you know, something extra and maybe a bit of inspiration on the next project, for me, it's never a bad thing. And it's always worth taking some time out and giving it a try and sort of see if it can add anything to creative design and workflow. And that is what I did with this. And it's the A1 Trigger Gate by Alex Hilton. So I'm going to have a quick look at what it has on the user interface. And then I'm going to share with you a couple of places I've used this in my tracks with automation on the mix, sort of wet and dry, so that it creeps up and adds sort of like rhythmic changes to anything like vocals and even FX risers and sweeps, that kind of thing. So first things first, let's have a look. And um, this is what it is. This is how it looks. And I've got this connected to, at the moment, um, just a synth patch from Analog Dreams. Um, it's part of the um, contact library, the Native Instruments contact library. Um, so that's what I've got it connected to at the moment. And straight out of the box, it sounds like this. And that's on the default setting and it's a trigger gate and in many ways it's the same as any other kind of gate in music whether that's a noise gate um, you know or a MIDI gate or anything like that and it's kind of like an on off switch if you like um, it lets the the note through for a certain amount of time and then goes off again um, but this does it uh, kind of sequentially it does it to a particular pattern um, and you know first things first it really does have some handy presets in there um, there's probably uh, everything you might need if you just go through the presets you can get some really interesting sort of timing and these ones that say like a side chain um, these are really handy actually uh, just sometimes if you know you want to get that kind of um, four beat to the bar kind of side chain pulsing sound you know and you just want to do it quickly for whatever it is um without having to set up you know actual compression and side chaining and everything else or whatever else it is that you might use um i'll show you what this one sounds like just quickly okay um you know that's kind of like a fairly basic pattern but it does what it says and it does actually work. I've tried that quite a few times. Um, but we might as well go straight into it and have a quick look at expert mode. And, of course, all these added sort of functions and settings appear um, on the interface. Now, okay, there's quite a bit going on up here at the top. Um, but basically, as far as the patterns are concerned, if I go back to um, the default pattern quickly... Um, over here, we can really control um, what's going on with this pattern from the volume of each note. That's called the step volume. So you can actually change the volume, you know, I guess similar to velocity, um, but that means that those notes, wherever you turn this down, will be played back at slightly different volume. Um, then you actually have the actual um, step length, and that's off, and then you have a short length note, and then you have full step, and that's a continuous note when the arrow appears just there. Um, well, if you wanted to get really interesting with this, it has a random function, a randomize function. So over here, and the great thing about this plugin is wherever you hover over, it does tell you what's going on underneath in this bar here. So it says here, random volume, um, create random step volume values in this pattern. So let's do it. And as you can see, all the volumes change now throughout this, um, this step pattern. And we can randomize both the, the length and the volume or just the length. So I'm going to randomize the actual step length now. And you'll see that all this across here changes. So there we go. We can get totally different patterns every time and then sort of see what that sounds like. Um, 
So that's great because you can literally click randomize a few times and get a totally different pattern, um, you know, and get some inspiration that way. And then over here, we can actually store these patterns on different banks. Um, so you can switch between them um, quickly if you needed to. So you could have maybe, if you like this actual step um, length, um, you like this particular pattern, you can copy this step length. Okay, so we go to the copy section here, click copy, go to pattern B, and then paste that. So you then have the same step length on pattern B, but then you could go back to randomize and randomize the volume. So we have the same step pattern, but at different varying volumes. So, I mean, I'll play those and switch between them. Then B. So you're getting the same sort of, you know, the same pattern, but just slight variations of it. And that can be really useful. Um, I haven't figured out yet if there is a way to maybe trigger these by MIDI. Um, so you could actually switch between the different patterns while it's playing back. And I haven't found anything yet that suggests it can do that, but that would be pretty cool if it could. Um, then, of course, you can initialize any parts of this with these buttons here. You can initialize everything again. Go back to random, make some new patterns, um, just randomize both and just see what happens. So that's a great starting point if you don't really want to go through and start, you know, adjusting lengths one by one. Click random, see what happens, and then take it from there. Um, so I'm going to go back to the, the sort of default pattern if I can. Um, let's go back to the default pattern. Um, and we have some added stuff here a low pass oh right okay up here is global effects on or off um which by the click of one button will turn off all the effects so all you have is just basically a dry gated pattern um and that's all underneath one button um but when the global effects are switched on you have things like a low pass filter so you can take the highs out um Let's have a quick listen to some of this. In fact, I'll just go through it first, then I'll play a little loop and mess about with it. Um, drive, um, input gain. Um, so that adds kind of like a bit of distortion. You can really kind of overdrive it in a way. Um, echo and delay, exactly what you'd expect. Um, there's different types of delay, I think. Yeah, ping pong delay. Um, the level of the delay, the timing of the delay. So that then adds some echo. Um, so that can be really interesting because it adds like an additional pattern at the same time um all of this is pretty good stuff you know um so you can hear the echo the input gain obviously adding some distortion there and then the low pass Which is kind of like some sort of I don't know classic kind of nineties kind of trance sound I, I guess. Um, so I, I would turn them off for now. The other interesting thing is the ADSR of the actual gated sound can be controlled with this panel over here, um, and as you know, fairly nice display, so you can see what what it is you're actually doing. Um, now this is where it kind of gets really interesting because if you change the attack time. And I'll play it back so you can see what I mean. If you look over here on the actual display that's showing you basically a waveform display of what it is that's coming through the gate, um, you'll notice that when you turn up the attack and sort of get rid of the transient of, of what's coming through the gate, um, obviously the volume goes down, it gets quieter. Um, so what they've included is a makeup gain, um, which is really cool. You know, if you if you like the long attack time of whatever sound it is you're putting through, I know I'm just using the same kind of synth sound at the moment, but if you like that and you hear that the, the volume kind of disappears, um, then you can literally use the makeup, um, the makeup gain to sort of bring that back in. So I'll show you what I mean. You can see there that it's actually gone quite quiet, and then you can use the makeup gain. Oh, bit too much. And 
and sort of get back to the original volume that you had. So I thought that was quite handy that they put that in there. Um, so it saves you having to sort of go back to the mixer and adjust the fader or, you know, put any additional plugins in um, to compensate for that. So, yeah, you've got the usual stuff on the ADSR. You've got decay, sustain, release, um, and they all do as expected. Um, the release... I really like the waveform display as well because it really does sort of show you sort of how much space is in between the pattern and whether the notes are kind of you know merging into each other or not um, but also down here you've got some additional features swing again um, you know which I sort of mentioned in the last video it's where it shifts the sort of four beat to the bar timing into a more sort of like swing like rhythm and um, the shift as well plus or minus which would move it off grid um, so sometimes that can be really handy when I've used this if it's slightly clashing with another sound that maybe has a similar pattern or maybe a hi-hat riff you can actually adjust the um, the timing so that the transients are slightly off from each other and then you know it can allow certain things to breathe and come through the mix that way so that is actually um, you know the time offset as it says there is more handy than you think actually in certain situations, especially if you've got a lot going on in the mix. The short step and the long step um, relate to these arrows up here. So this, where you've only got like half a green line there is a short step. And then obviously you go into a long step when it's a full green line at the top. So this is quite handy because let's say you have a pattern or a sequence, I should say that you, you're happy with but maybe the short notes could be more kind of like i don't know staccato the right words uh, you know the short notes could be shorter but the the long notes um you know the long steps are fine with this you can just adjust each one um without having to sort of go up here and change anything so let's have a quick listen and see what that's doing so So that's only shortening the actual short steps. Um, it's only adjusting those. And again, it can like, it, it just completely changes the pattern. So you can get really creative with this. It's like, it's really not a static thing. Once you, you start sort of changing some of these, um, just from the initial pattern that you have, it can sort of change into all these different things and just really give you some inspiration, um, especially when used on different things. And like I say, I will give you um, some examples in a minute as to where I've used this in different tracks. And it's just sort of like added, I don't know, something unexpected and interesting to maybe, you know, certain parts of the song. So the other thing you've got here is manually switch between the run and stop state so you can keep the pattern running all the time. Um, this is actually really handy. Um, if let's say I wanted to, um, let's just shift the octave on here. If, if I wanted to now work on my synth sound, um, without the pattern running, I can stop this here and then I can hear my synth again. Um, which is great if I want to make some adjustments to the sound and I don't want that going all the time because obviously you know, it makes it harder to tell what you're doing. Um, so you can actually stop it without having to bypass the actual effect. You can just literally stop it from this play button. But that play button will come back into, um, it, it will go back on as soon as you press play uh, in the arranger window. So the one thing I find about this, this um, user interface is if I've clicked anything on there, like the play button, the keyboard won't actually um, trigger the arranger window. It will trigger the plugin window because you've clicked in there. And I need to remember that sometimes because I go to press play and it's like, why isn't it working? But then I realize I have to click back into back into Cubase because you know, it's treating it as a separate kind of um, user window, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can turn the expert mode off and it simplifies things a little bit. And you can go through some of the patterns that are in there. I think some of the presets are great, especially, you know, if you maybe use the randomized function on the on the actual volume of each step. Um, 
then you can start with one of the presets and kind of make it your own in a way. Um, I'll just let you have a listen to a couple of other presets. So yeah, it's a really good starting point. Literally, you can just sort of load this up and um, get going straight away, really. And you also have pattern length over here. So the pattern length is then just four sixteenths. Um, so you can simplify things or make it more complicated. So there's a lot you can do with this um, as soon as you load it up. And I've actually been using this more and more since I downloaded it. And now what I'm going to do is show you just a couple of examples where I've used this in a track. And it's just added to it and made it slightly more interesting in those parts of the song. Okay, so here is um, one example where I've used the A1 trigger gate automated on a riser sound or a sweep sound, you might call it. And uh, this is a track that I'm working on. It's called Put the Pressure On. And here you can see where I've automated the mix wet and dry of the A1 trigger gate. And I'll let you hear it just as the, the sweep kind of comes to an end. You can hear the trigger gate coming in and it just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. So yeah, you know that I, I kind of like really like to use it for for things like that. Um, and I'll just show you uh, with the trigger gate on the screen. Let's put it back to where it was. Um, So yeah, it's just one way to kind of liven up set and you know, if you if you're using certain samples for things like that, you know, sweeps and stuff, um risers. Um I don't know, what would you prefer to call them? Because I see some some people calling them sweeps, some people call them risers. Uh what do you prefer to call them? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to know. Um so this is definitely one example, and now I'll show you another one quickly. Okay, so for this example, I don't actually have the project to hand to show you the automation in it because this was actually um, a competition entry for the Produce Like a Pro YouTube channel um, with Warren Hewitt. And the artist was Clo, and the track was Sliding Doors, and it was a remix competition. And um, I'm just going to show you the finished track because the project folder was absolutely monstrous with all the stems and everything else it ended up a really big file size so at the moment it's in cloud storage and i haven't downloaded it again to sort of show you inside the project but hopefully you'll be able to hear what it is i'm trying to point out and i actually used the a1 trigger gate on the vocal as it got to the end of the eight bars and i'll show you what i mean here hopefully you can hear it but it's the same thing automating the trigger gate um, on the vocal channel itself. So here you go. So yeah, same thing. Just sort of like add something unexpected. So what I'm getting at is that you can use this A1 trigger gate on so many things, you know, whether that's just kind of sound effects or whether it's synths or whether it's vocals, it has multiple uses. So that's it for this video. I would definitely suggest checking this one out, giving it a try, um, you know, and seeing what you can get out of it. Um, as always, if you like this video or you didn't like it, let me know in the comments. If you did like it, please give it a like and also subscribe because I will be doing many more videos like this. But that is it for this one. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Keep creating. And I'll see you in the next one.